particles. They're awesome. But Blender's default particle systems leave a little something to be desired in terms of collisions and physics interactions. So let's use the molecular plus add-on and add some real-world physics and collisions to our particle systems and make some amazing scenes. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to watch more interesting videos like this every week. The molecular plus add-on is a branch of an old molecular script that was released for Blender 2.8. A huge shout out to you 3D Real for keeping this amazing project alive that really takes the Blender particle system to its next level. You can download the latest release from the link in the description below. Make sure to download the 310 version for Blender 4 and 311 for the later Blender versions. Install the plugin, activate it and save your preferences. Now you don't need to select your object, add a particle system on it, set your end frames, lifetime, etc. You can find the molecular plus add-on in the end panel in the side. Select your emitter object and there's different types. First is a regular emitter that emits particles in a uniform velocity. Then we have the 2D grid which distributes particles on the surface of the mesh. And also a 3D grid which distributes particles all throughout the volume. To actually see the add-on in practice, make sure to turn on self collisions in the physics panel, hit simulate and wait for it to finish baking. It'll take a little while depending on the sub steps you have used, but after baking is complete, you can play it back in the viewport without any lag. And now you can see that our particles interact with the collision plane and also with each other. To further test it out, I added a cube, added 4 levels of subdivision with control plus 4 and then made it a 3D grade emitter and hit simulate. You can also change the voxel size and the randomness of the distribution of the particles. For any collision object, just select it and click the collider button in the molecular panel. Here you can also change the damping and friction of the surface. Then I selected a UV sphere to render as the particles, added an HDRI for lighting and rendered out this quick scene for demonstration. And it's not just this, you can make a 3D grid, model a simple collider object, even animate it if you want and hit simulate. And that lets us have animated particles interacting with real objects. I'm using this effect in a scene for my upcoming short film Chai. Stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss it. We can also add two particle systems and make them interact with each other using the Molecular Plus add-on. The Blender Vanilla Particle System doesn't let two particle systems interact with each other. But in the Molecular Physics panel, if you check self-collisions and collisions with others, then you can make two particle systems interact with each other in really cool ways. And make some renders like this. Let's look at the next feature of Molecular Plus. In the physics panel, if you turn on link at birth, it links all the particles together into the shape of the base mesh at the start of the simulation. There are various settings here to experiment with, like tension and stiffness, which control the initial shape of the simulated particles. Then there's damping, which damps the energy of interaction between each particle. And finally, there's broken strength. This value is the percentage of the length up to which the bonds between particles can be stretched before they are broken. Each of these values is also accompanied by a random slider which increases the randomness in these values. By playing with these four values, tension, stiffness, damping and broken, you can create materials of different densities and compositions. While some can break apart like brittle and dry sand, like this render I made. Or by reducing the stiffness and the broken value, you can make something more like a clumpy wet sand material. Another important value is the max links, which indicates how many maximum links can a particle form with the next particles. That created this render, which breaks down in clumps instead of collapsing directly. Or for this render, in which I increased the tension and stiffness, and also gave the broken a high value between 5 to 10, and no randomness, created this giant bouncy ball made completely out of particles. The randomness in the voxel size and the grid distribution also affects your simulation, so make sure to play with that as well. Let's look at the relinking feature next. I've not had a chance to play around with this much and I'm still exploring the effect. But basically what it does is, it allows particle to relink back together after the initial simulation has started. It's important to note that you can even keyframe these values to make gradual changes over time. Here I tried making a particle system which is affected by a force field and then keyframe the relinking to make the particles link back together. You can also increase the random relinking percentage. I still have to figure out how to use this effect properly, but I tried making this scene in which some particles fall through a grate and then link back together like the T1000 in Terminator 2. This is still a work in progress, but I used meta balls to render 
the particles so that they mesh together when they get close. And this is the render that I had. This just barely touches the surface of Blender particle systems, but go give it a whirl and hack particle systems using this molecular plus add-on. Subscribe for more videos every week.